Hello! Today we are making some mushrooms and for that we are going to use white and yellow. First off you are wanting to roll the clay out very thinly, then stack both sheets of clay together and roll again through a pasta machine or maker and then you are going to cut out a few circles with a round cutter. These are going to be the top of the mushrooms. You then remove each and every circle carefully and then start to flatten the edges by pinching them. You want the edges to be very thin, hence the pinching. And then you want to round up the circle into a sort of ball. And one technique is to pinch the sides, like so. I'm using here also a ball-ended tool, so I don't misshape the inner circle. And then just pinch and pinch all around. You are going to repeat this for every circle of clay. Just go around, flatten the edges, then round everything up and pinch to hold in place. You can also use a tool to pinch like a tweezer if your fingers are too big or if you decided that your mushrooms are a lot smaller than those I'm showing you in this video. And be sure to always round up everything so it doesn't look like just a pinch. Take your time. You are in no rush. And just go on doing all the tiny circles. For baking, as you can see below my hands, I put them on a piece of paper. And this is so during baking, the surface that is sticking to the paper is not going to get glossy. If you would bake them on a tile, the clay would look very much like plastic after baking and we do not want that. And here just to close up again, of the pinching to flatten up the edges, then the rounding up with the ball and the tools and my fingers, and here I pinch on the inside. You can pinch on the inside or the outside. The outside is a lot easier to do, but inside works as well. And here, as you see, I'm using, as I talked before, a tool, a simple pair of tweezers. Again, there's no rule where you want to pinch. Often, some mushrooms will look more pinched on the outside and some will look more pinched on the inside. And then you bake everything. After baking and cooling off, you are going to add some white clay in the middle and then push in nicely with the ball and the tools or your fingers until it's flush with the cap. And then you are making the stem of the mushroom by simply cutting out a piece of clay. Try to flatten one side and put it on top and then again using a ball and a tool or your fingers just push the clay onto the, well, the other clay. Pinch and roll the stem between your th fingers so you thin out the stem. And then continue smoothing out the edges. And finally using a spatula, that's at least my favorite tool, but any kind of pointy tool would work, like a pin or a needle or even a craft knife, try to simply draw lines into the mushroom and up onto the stem. Take your time, maybe go over some of the lines, because some will be deeper and some will be more shallow.
it usually helps to have a picture, a reference picture. I'm going to link down below the reference picture I used, so you can see what I was going for. Of course, there are many, many mushrooms in the world, so you don't have to make that precise mushroom. But you can also imagine different colors and slightly different shapes. And here just another close-up so you can better see how I pushed the white clay into the mushroom cap using a ball ender tool. I'm just trying to show you all the angles so you can really grasp what I'm doing. It's not always easy to understand when you just see. Yeah, I just put the stem on top and decided to thin it out by just pinching and rolling between my fingers. And then just smooth around the edges with the ball and the tool. And here I added very quickly the lines with my spatula. Check below in the description box what exactly I mean by spatula. It's a tool that I love and I'm using all the time, so I highly recommend it. However, as I said before, I tend to also encourage people to use whatever they have at home. So if you have a craft knife, if you have a pin, if you have a needle, all these are tools that would work as well. And again, just continue making all your mushrooms. First adding the white flesh, smoothing it out, adding the stem, smoothing it out. That's a lot of smoothing out in this video, it's quite smooth, right? And then adding the lines of the mushrooms, which most likely have a more scientific name than just lines of a mushroom. But for that I should have checked before, which I rarely do. I love those lines very much. Hence why I decided to show the bottom of the mushrooms in this sculpt. And just go along and do your lines. Are you bored yet? <laughs> Maybe you are. And here I'm just putting them all together, assembling them like I think they look good. So as you can see, I'm just assembling them without any kind of liquid clay for now. But I add it at the end because I always think it's much easier to compose without being sure if that makes sense. So you compose and you work on certain details. And then at the end you add some liquid clay to hold it all together. I also made some smaller versions of these mushrooms because in real life you rarely have just one size of mushrooms in a bunch of them, so be sure to make different sizes. The same technique applies obviously, so not much difference, it's just a bit fiddlier because it's, it's smaller. Obviously you do not need to use the same colors as I do. I chose the colors and the shape of that mushroom for the specific project I am going to do. But I cannot stress this out enough in my videos. These videos are just to show you how I work and to give you some inspiration. But by all means, please just take them and do something personal with them. Try to learn the technique and then find the colors you like, find the shapes you find better, pinch differently, do the lines differently, make the bunches of mushrooms differently. Just let it flow and be, be yourself. And then finally add some liquid clay with the brush so everything sticks together quite nicely after baking. It's easier with the brush so you don't put too much liquid clay and it doesn't look like a blob. And that's it! You can now bake and maybe varnish. I very much hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. And I very much hope to see you in my next video. Bye!
And here we go again. So you can do that as long as you have clay and until your sculpture is finished. <laughs> 